Hello whittlers and carvers and welcome back to the joy of carving. In this video we'll be whittling these little cactuses together. So grab yourself a cup of tea or a coffee, get your whittling knife and let's begin the joy of carving. So I'm using a small piece of Sapelli mahogany here which will be the terracotta pot of that cactus. And we're going to begin by marking out where we want the lip, the edge of that pot to be. Sapelli mahogany is a beautiful wood, but it can be a slight challenge to carve because it has a tendency to want to just split, even if you're carving with the grain, so just be mindful of that. And all I'm doing here is I'm laying the blade of the knife on the line that we've just drawn, and I'm just rolling it gently just to make an impression where that line is going to be and what that's going to do is create a stopping point for us it's going to create a valley for us to carve into and we're going to repeat that process all the way around what i do is i just do a small piece at a time just a small section rather than trying to do the whole line at once and as that line is more established we can really start to whittle into that lid of the pot so we want this pot to be tapered so it's going to be smaller at the base than it is at the top. And the easiest way to achieve this with the Sapelli mahogany is to go across the grain. As I mentioned, it has a tendency to want to just split up a chunk of wood as you're carving it. But if we go across the grain like this, it's going to prevent that from happening. I am carving very close to my thumb here, but this is just how I'm comfortable carving. I've been carving for many, many years, but I would recommend that you wear a thumb sheath or use the technique that you're carving away from yourself at this point. As we get closer to the form that we want, we're just going to take away less and less wood. And then we're just finishing off by rounding those harsh edges. And there's the pot. And I decided at this point as well that before I put the cactus into the pot, I was going to drill a small hole in the top of the pot just to give it a bit of depth. And now we can begin carving the basewood cactuses. And the shapes for these are actually relatively simple to carve. And we're just going to round all of those harsh edges and we just need to be mindful of the direction of the grain here. Make sure that you go downhill when you carve, as I've mentioned in all of the other videos. Going downhill will mean that we're not lifting that grain up and splitting it. I just want to quickly show you here as well what will happen if we go up the hill, if we go against the grain. So. I'll use the other side as an example, that flat piece. So if I start to go up that hill, it's going to get really, really difficult to carve because the grain is resisting, it's not going to carve, it just wants to split. So firstly, it's a real struggle to carve it, and then if you carry on, that happens. So it just splits and splinters the wood off instead of carving it. So it's really important to be mindful of the direction of the grain and the direction that you're carving in. One of the worst things is to be in the middle of a beautiful carving that you're working on and you go against the grain and you end up splintering a massive chunk of wood up and you've ruined the piece that you're working on. So continue rounding both of those pieces. Just be careful where your thumbs and your fingers are. Continue rounding them and eventually you'll have nice simple cactus shapes which we're going to then progress and add the detail to. And then what I also have are these various little pieces of offcuts which are going to be different arms splintering off the cactus and also the flowers for the top as well. And we're going to carve them in exactly the same way that we carved the larger pieces, just rounding all the corners off and being mindful of that direction of grain. And we're going to continue to test out where that piece is going to go out to, where that arm's going to stretch out to. And when you've decided on the area, you just need to flatten the area so that when we glue that extra piece in place, it's going to have a flat surface to adhere to. Once you have that extra piece that's going to extend out, we can carve the flower that's going to go on top of that as well. And I'm just using my thumb sheath there to give me that added security when I'm carving. And of course you can switch the carving technique around and carve away from yourself if that's what you're comfortable with. But we still need to be mindful regardless of which technique that we're using. 
because that piece is so small and we're whittling really close to our fingers here, so just be mindful about where the knife blade is. When you're happy with that flower, you're just going to test where you're going to put it on the cactus, make sure it fits. And I've carved one for each of the cactuses there and I'm just testing where I'm going to put them. Now we can begin carving the detail of the flower. And it's relatively simple, it's a simple technique to do, but it looks more complicated than it is. It's just a little bit tricky because we're working very close to our fingers again here. So we're going to make very, very light lines all the way around that piece that we've carved. And the light touch is key here. You don't need to press the tip of that knife in particularly hard into that wood. Just go over the area multiple times if you need to. And then all I'm doing here is I'm choosing a few random spots and I'm just carving more of a valley into some of those lines. So it's just giving it a bit of added extra depth. And the top of the flower is even simpler to do. All we're doing is carving lines away from the center to give the impression that it has a texture, that it has layers to it. But that's all we need to do for the top of the flower. The biggest challenge I think with this particular project is just that we're working with various small pieces. So it can be a little bit intimidating for a novice woodworker just to have the knife so close to your fingers. But just use caution and remember to use a light touch as well. We can proceed now with carving the actual detail of the cactus. So for this particular design, I'm choosing a series of lines all the way across the shape of the cactus. Similar to how we carved the lines for the flower, we're scoring those lines in it in order to give us a stopping point to carve into. So it's a little bit more challenging when we're carving into this particular line because we're having to constantly shift and change how we're using and how we're carving with that knife because the knife is often going to get in the way. It's quite a large knife for some small detail that we're carving. But just keep moving the knife, get into a comfortable position so that you can carve across that grain into the line that we've made. From there, all I've done is repeat that on the other side as well, so that we've got one singular thick line running down, and you're going to repeat that process until you have as many lines as you want going all the way around that cactus. But the trickiest part of this particular piece is carving the space in between those lines because we're going across the grain, but more so because it's such a narrow area. But just take your time and persevere with it and remember to round the edges of those lines as you're carving. And eventually this is how it will look. And you can stop here with yours if you don't want to carve any further detail, but I just want to add a little bit extra with this one. So I'm going to carve notches all throughout those lines. And these are really straightforward to do. So we're just carving a V shape, we're carving a valley. So you can see there, I'm carving down one side, then switching the angle, carving the opposite side to just give me that V shape. It's such a simple technique to do, but I really think it gives this that added extra depth and detail. And from there, all you need to do is to just decide where you're going to put that flower and glue it into place. The next piece of the cactus is going to follow the same principles that we used for carving the lines on that first one. So we're going to draw in the lines where we want, and then we're going to use the tip of the knife to just score those lines that we have a stopping point to carve towards. I'm going for a little bit of a grid method here, I'm going for a slightly different design, but you can choose whatever you want for the design. So we'll proceed exactly as we did before. We're going to use the tip of the knife to just score in all of those lines that we've drawn out. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we've scored in the lines, and now what I'm doing is I'm using the edge of the knife to just whittle in all of the ends of the squares that we've drawn. So we're creating a beveled edge for each of those squares. So 
so it tends to just be slightly trickier when we're carving along the grain because the area that we're carving is so small we're being forced to use the very tip of the knife because it's such a narrow area and you'll find that you have to firstly carve along the grain and then you might have to switch the angle that you're carving and carve across the grain as well and it may take a little bit of time to carve this particular technique this design but I really feel like it pays off it gives it such an unusual look and there's the finished design so I have that small offshoot to carve here as well. I'm going to follow the exact same method, just scoring the grid lines and then carving into the beveled edges of that grid as well. And from there, all you need to do is just glue all of those various pieces together. And here's our finished cactuses. These cactuses have been such a fun little project to work on. And there's so much freedom with the design of these as well. You can do whatever kind of pattern you can think of. You can have spikes all over them. You can have circles all over them. You can really go to town on these and come up with some wacky designs. I do hope you've enjoyed that video and you found it useful. Please help support the channel by liking and subscribing. And as always, happy carvings, everyone.